نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعض فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعطدنا لهم عذابا أليما صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected brothers in Islam and sisters, first of all, I would like to make a dua, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept our sitting and gathering here and make it for your good pleasure. And as you know that we gather together here because there are two things. So I have completed the Nazira of Holy Quran and also a new, new baby is born for brother Mujib so we can say that there are two happinesses number one the birth of a new baby that's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَحَبُّ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَحَبُّ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورُ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا That's the distribution of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He decides and he decrees giving a son to someone or a daughter or both and making someone issueless. So that's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe a son or a daughter. In a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-ibn rahmatun wal bintu baraka. That son is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and daughter is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you know, my respected brothers and sisters, in Arabian Peninsula, certain tribes, they have their own culture. They were not in love with their daughters. And that's why they used to bury them alive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whenever someone got the news of the birth of a daughter, he used to become pale, pale and yellow and his face was darkened because of gum, grief and worries. Now he was thinking, should he keep her alive and face the humiliation by the community or should he bury her alive? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whatsoever the case may be, this is bad and that is bad as well, sa'ama yahkumun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ On the day of judgment, that girl would be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what was your sin and crime that they buried you alive? Respected brothers and sisters, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, he told them, in other words, I can say that he made them human and he told them, the daughter that's a human as well, that's your daughter, that's a part of your body, that's your gene. In a hadith it is narrated that a Bidwan came. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that time he was holding Hussein, his grandson and kissing him. So that Bidwan said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Atukabbirun as-sibyan? You people are kissing small kids? Because that was against the, the brutal culture of Bidwans. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, 
ماذا افعل بك لو نزغ الله الرحمة عن قلبك what can I do to you oh brother if Allah has taken out the mercy from your heart and this is actually the symbol and sign of mercy so he told the prophet he was a Muslim still his heart was very uh, clear and very clean so he said to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that oh the messenger of Allah to be very honest with you and to tell you the truth I have four daughters they are they much afraid of me when I enter to the house they rush to the corner and they hide somewhere and if they come across me I curse them prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him la tadu alayhinna don't do that fa inna al banat fihinna al baraka Allah has put his blessing in girls hunna al mujammilat fi zina when there's a happy occasion their zark bark dress yes and their beautiful dresses and different type of colors it will increase your happiness wa hunna al mu'inat fi shidda they are your consolers at the time of difficulties because when you face any difficulty outside and you will come home your daughter will console you they have no problem Allah will make it easy Allah is there this is life things like that happen but as far as the case of your son is concerned he will show you his anger I told you 10 times don't do that so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him وَهُنَّ الْمُعِينَاتِ فِي الشِّدَّةِ and Prophet Sallallahu told him وَهُنَّ الْمُمَرِّزَاتِ فِي الْمَرَزِ that is the daughter who will be nursing you when you are old or you are sick so he said أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمَ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْحَيُّ الْقَيُّومِ but my dear respected brothers and sisters anyhow our brother Mujib he got a son may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his son and bless this family and bless all of you as well because you share with them their happiness now when there is a mercy of Allah, Allah says, La in shakartum la azidandakum. You must be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever good He brought you, whatever happiness He brought you. And you must be patient and stable, whatever difficulty you face. Because when we have difficulty, when we have calamities, when we have hardship, we lose our hope and we are totally hopeless. Why? That is the end of the world? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whatever you are facing here, good or bad, illa fi kitabin min qabli an nabra'aha. Actually, that was written in the decree of Allah. That was written in the, in the central copy written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things are happening according to that book of Allah which is written already. Now, if you will make your belief a strong one in this, that everything is written there, you will never be hopeless whenever you are facing difficulty and you will never be proud if you are in good condition. Because you believe that this is coming from Allah and that is coming from Allah as well. And actually, to tell you one thing, my respected brothers and sisters, this pain is not in the thing which happened. That is your feeling. And that's why, Someone who faced the same time difficulties, he is okay. Nothing is happening to him because he is a strong man. He is a man of character. But you, if a little bit thing, and to be panic in pain and worse than pain. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala said, when you will become panic, when you have pain, that is worse than pain. It will ruin you. It will destroy you. So Allah says, then that is in the book of Allah, illa fi kitab. Now, can we change the decree of Allah? Can we modify it? Can we bring an amendment to that? That Allah has decided for me, are you something like that? I am trying to change it so I may not face it. Nobody can do that. Nobody. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed, it will happen. What He has not, it will never happen. Even the whole world will get together. And respected brothers, and sisters in Islam, in a hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, لَمِتَّمَ عَنَّا صَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِمَا قَدْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكَ If 
the people from all around the world will get together to give you something good they cannot do it but only to the extent of what Allah has decreed already and if they will get together to harm you they cannot do that but only to the extent which Allah has decreed already so you may not be proud of what you have and you may not be hopeless and lose your hope or, uh, when you are facing situation other way around and this will make your life a stable one. Nothing will happen to you, neither in happiness nor in calamities. One brother, he asked me on Friday, I mentioned that one brother asked me that, Khalisa, I saw you in adversity and prosperity. Nothing happened to you. I said, yes, because I have made up my mind that nothing will happen to you, but only to that extent which Allah has decreed and decided. That's number one. And I told him that there are three Ds. Danger, death, and dollar. Yes? So I told him that I don't have the danger of death and the danger of dollar. That I will lose it. I will lose my life. Okay. That's the decree of Allah. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he was asked by some of his followers, they, who made you that much brave? He said, my death. He said, what do you mean? Your death. It made you brave. He said, yes, of course, because I believe that nothing can deprive me of my life, but only my death. And death, it has a time that will come in its own time. Your death, So anyhow, my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, when a baby is born, what is your duty? How you will be thankful and grateful to Allah for a day to great mercy and blessing of Allah. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us all about that. Number one, the very first thing is to give him azan. That's actually a message to be given to the newborn baby. That Alhamdulillah, you are born in a Muslim family who believe in the greatness of Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salati, hayya ala falah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah in his right ear. And in the left ear, that's a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give him iqama. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu 